In this release of Home Assistant, we have some quite good number of updates, right from making it easier to organize the dashboard with labels to some really interesting integrations and matter updates. So let's look at it. The first new change is that we no longer have titles in section. That's removed, but we now have a new heading card. These heading cards can be used as title or subtitle cards to organize sections. You can also include entity statuses that will be shown next to the heading. For example, I'm currently choosing the bedroom temperature to be visible in the header. You can also add more than one entities that will be shown next to each other and can also be rearranged depending on how you want them to be viewed. You can further go ahead and customize each entity as per how you want it to be displayed. Like you can set the color of the icon, select the elements to be displayed and also the state attributes that you want to be displayed. You can also customize the interaction with these entities like perform an action, navigate or do not do anything. You can also set visibility conditions for these entities. So with this, you have a pretty granular control on what and how it's displayed in the title or subtitle. Now, since this title option from the sections are removed, and if you had titles in the sections, then those will be converted automatically into heading cards. So everything would work fine after the upgrade. In the developer tools section, we had this statistics tab that would tell us the long-term statistics of the entities and if there were any issues related to these entities. But this was a bit hidden away and might not bring to your attention if something was broken. Like including me, I test quite many things and I keep adding and removing devices and those remain often. So now to tackle this, once we have some issue like this, a repair issue will be raised and this will bring it to your attention. Now, as per my testing, I've seen these repair issues pop up, not for the existing one, but the ones that are newly detected. Now, there are also some enhancements made to the repair issue that is raised. In this release, the repair issue is further enhanced to show who raised this repair issue, which is visible directly or by opening the issue. Next, we have some changes in automations. Previously, services were renamed to actions around two releases back. In this release, we have trigger, condition and action changed to its plural form. That is, if we view the automation in the YAML mode, then instead of trigger, it's now triggers, same with conditions and actions. Now, this is not a breaking change or deprecation of the existing syntax and there are currently no plans to remove the singular syntax. Your existing automations that are configured using the UI will be automatically updated to use the new syntax. Next, we have a bunch of integrations from the awesome Home Assistant community. One that caught my eye was this Google Photo integration. We can now integrate Google Photos API into Home Assistant with which we can upload photos from Home Assistant. For this, you will have to generate a client ID and secret to access the Google Photos API. Once you do that, you can see this new action that is available to upload photos from Home Assistant. Now, along with this, we also have some improvements in the existing integrations, like for the Tesla fleet integration that now supports new entities for climate, media player, lock entities, etc. We also have the SwitchBot cloud integration supporting their new K10 Plus mini robot in Home Assistant. Now, with the ongoing efforts to bring as many integrations into the UI, we now have a few more integrations. Next, Home Assistant is continuously updating their Matter integrations towards their goal for certification. In this release, the Matter integration adds a new button for identifying devices that are connected via Matter. We also have support for Valve entities and air quality sensors. Now, the most awaited feature for me was the support from Matter 1.3 specification for power and energy sensors. With this new update, we will get to see the power usage and energy consumed by devices if they support energy monitoring and reporting. Currently, I have this Matter Zigbee bridge from Third Reality with which I have connected a Zigbee smart plug and I was able to see the total energy consumed by this plug. But for some reason, the power was still zero. This might be because the bridge is not yet updated to support the new Matter specification. I would love to see energy monitoring being provided by more and more manufacturers by updating their Matter devices with the latest specifications.
Next, we have some good improvements in the YAML editor. We now have this vertical line that will make it easier to see indentations and also help you to spot indentation errors. We also have this cool collapse and expand capabilities to collapse and expand various sections in the YAML configuration. Lastly, we have some noteworthy improvements. We now have this new measurement of energy that is calorie that is useful for treadmill and exercise bike. We also have this new merge response template function that will help you to merge responses from multiple services. Now all these changes that I'm showing are based on the beta release of Home Assistant so there may be some changes in the final release. Now if you like this video make sure to hit that like button as well as hit that subscribe button with the bell notification such that you get notified once I publish a new video. Now if you want to support this channel there are links into the description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via Patreon. Till then take care and I will see you in my next one.